Welcome to Pinnacle Online Coaching Classes. I am Neeru and today we will be doing SSC CGL Tier 1 paper. This paper is according to the new pattern given by SSC and I will be doing paper code 864. I will be covering the general awareness section with you. From question number 26 to question number 50 is going to be done here. The general awareness section and my name is Neeru. Question number 27. The Battle of Plassey was fought in the year. When was the Battle of Plassey fought? An important question from history and this Battle of Plassey, it has been a major turning point in making the Britishers all the more powerful in India. My options are 1775, 1761, 1757 or 1576. Question is going to be 1757. For this question, answer will be 1757. Exactly 100 years after this, we will have the revolt of 1857. So just remember by that 100 years prior to the revolt of 1857, we had the Battle of Plassey. Okay, the Battle of Plassey, this was a decisive victory of the British East India Company over Nawab of Bengal and his French allies and it was fought on 23rd June 1757. The battle established company rule in which expanded over much uh, which expanded over India much of India for the next 100 years. On 23rd June 1757, Battle of Plassey was fought uh, between the forces of Siraj Dola and the troops of the British East India Company led by Robert Clive. Please remember Robert Clive also because you can be given a question as to who led the British troops against Siraj Dola in the Battle of Plassey. The answer is going to be Robert Clive. Please remember all this. This is question number 26. Next is question number 27. The Mediterranean regions are characterized by what are the character traits of the Mediterranean region? That is our next question. The Mediterranean region is characterized by what? It is characterized uh, by heavy rain in which season? Heavy rain in which season? Is it in winter? Is it in autumn? Is it in spring? Or is it in summer? Firstly, what is the Mediterranean region? Uh, uh, the area around the Mediterranean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea which lies near Europe and in, uh, near Asia that is uh, known as the, uh, the area around the Mediterranean Sea that is known as the Mediterranean region and this region is very very famous world over for citrus fruits, citrus fruits that is oranges, lemons etc, grapes, they are all citrus fruits and the Mediterranean region it has heavy rains in the winter season question number 27 answer is going to be a winter season during summer season regions of mediterranean climate are dominated by subtropical high pressure cells making rainfall impossible but during the winter season the polar jet streams are associated and associated periodic storms bring heavy rain precipitation is heavier during the colder months Question number 27, answer is A. Question number 28, Mahatma Gandhi began his political activities in India first from. Where did Mahatma Gandhi begin his political activities in India? Mahatma Gandhi arrived in India on 9th January 1915 and that is the reason that every year on 9th January we celebrate NRI day known for non-resident non Indians and those who have achieved something major in their fields we even uh, felicitate them. NRI day is celebrated this, on this day because on 9th Jan Gandhiji came back from South Africa to India. But after he came to India, his political guru or his political advisor, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, advised him not to get involved directly in any kind of uh, any kind of movement in India and to observe things himself and then take his decision. So Gandhiji, first for the first two years, he did not get involved in anything, and he made a world uh, he made a tour of India. He travelled uh, extensively. And then finally, there are three movements, the Kheda, the Champaran and the Ahmedabad mill strike, which are considered his first three important movements with which Gandhiji got involved. So Gandhiji 
Mahatma Gandhi began his political activities in India with Dandi March, setting up of the Sabarmati Ashram, Kheda Satyagraha or Champaran and the answer is going to be Champaran Satyagraha. Champaran is a place in Bihar where the peasants were forced to grow indigo which was an important commercial crop for the Britishers. Gandhiji returned from South Africa in January 1915 and the Champaran Satyagraha took place in 1916. This was his first major struggle and please remember it was during Champaran Satyagraha that Gandhiji for the first time met Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Gandhiji took up the cause of Champaran indigo cultivators against the European indigo planters under the Teen Katia system. In the Teen Katia system, 3 by 20th of the land, the peasants were forced to grow indigo. This was Gandhiji's first major political work in India and after that Gandhiji got involved in Ahmedabad mill strike and the Kheda Satyagraha. Ahmedabad mill strike, Gandhiji's first hunger strike. Okay. And here with the Champaran Satyagraha, this was Gandhiji's first, Gandhiji's first movement with which he got involved and in this civil disobedience also took place. You often get, get a question as to among the following civil disobedience was associated to which movement? The Champaran movement. Question number 28, answer is D. Question number 29. The classical dance of Andhra Pradesh is. What is the classical dance of Andhra Pradesh? Kuchipudi, Udissi, Bharatnatyam or Kathakali. These are my four options. Now first let us read a little about the classical dances and then we will come back to the slide. Kuchipudi is a dance of which place? Kuchipudi is a classical dance form from Andhra Pradesh. So my answer is A. Andhra Pradesh. Odissi is from Odisha and among our classical dances which we have, Odissi is the oldest. In fact, we have a ruler from ancient India who is shown uh, in one of the paintings as if he is watching an Odissi dance. And this Odissi dance was first initially, it was performed in the temples of Odisha. So India is a, ma uh, India is a major, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Odissi is a classical Indian dance originated from Odessa and it's an ancient classical dance that originated in the Hindu temples of Odessa. Then we have Bharatnatyam. Bharatnatyam is an Indian classical dance from Tamil Nadu and its neighboring regions mostly performed by females. Kathakali. Bharatnatyam performed by females. Then we have Kathakali. This is a major form of classical Indian dance. It is another story play form of art, but one distinguishes by its elaborate colorful makeup, costumes, face masks wearing actor dancers who have traditionally been all males. Kathakali primarily developed as a Hindu performance art in the Malayalam speaking region of Kerala. So Kathakali is from Kerala, Bharatnatyam is from Tamil Nadu, Odissi is from Odessa and Kuchipudi from Andhra Pradesh. Now if you take a look at these pictures now, this is what is known as Kathakali. The, uh, there's a in this the costume, the makeup, the elaborate headgear, these are the major features. And in the earlier times, the dance used to con continue throughout the night. This is Bharatnatyam. Bharatnatyam, this is Odissi. Odissi, in which uh, in Odissi dance, mostly silver jewelry is worn. And uh, this is Kuchipudi. This is Kuchipudi. The classical dance of Andhra Pradesh is Kuchipudi. A question from art and culture. Question number 30. Who is considered the founder of the Gupta Empire? Now again we have a question from history. Who is considered the founder of the Gupta Empire? Sri Gupta, Samudra Gupta, Chandra Gupta 1 or Chandra Gupta. The Gupta Empire, it uh, came into prominence from 320 BC and then it is going to continue to rule till around we can say 550 BC. This is the golden age of Hindu culture, golden age for Sanskrit, golden age for temple architecture etc. Now, who is considered the founder of Gupta Empire? The founder is Sri Gupta and he ruled from 240 to 280 and after that when Chandragupta 1 came to power this dynasty rose to prominence. So who is considered the founder of the Gupta Empire? Answer is Sri Gupta. Sri Gupta after that we will have Ghatotkach and not much is known about Ghatotkach then Chandragupta 1 then Samudragupta who will expand the empire and it is said about him that he conquered all the land between the two seas. 
Ramagupt, Chandragupt, two, Kumaragupt, all these will be the important rulers. Who is considered the founder? The history of the Gupta dynasty begins with its founding by Sri Gupta. Sri Gupta is described as Maharaj. He does not take any elaborate titles which shows that probably he was not very strong and powerful. The most likely time for his rule is 240 to 280 and it was in the Chinese traveler Itziang mentioned about Sri Gupta in his writings. Question number 30 from history. Answer is A. Question number 31 from geography, physical geography. Spring tides occur on new moon day only, full moon day as well as on new moon, full moon day only and the day when the moon's position is in its first quarter. Firstly, we have to understand what are spring tides. Spring tides occur on those days. These are those tides, tides which are slightly more than the normal tides. And neap tides, they are those tides which are slightly lesser than the normal tides. So, when do spring tides occur and when do neap tides occur? Spring tides refer to either of the two tides that occur or uh, occur at or just after new moon and full moon when the so they are going to basically occur on days of new moon and full moon when the tide generating force of the sun acts in the same direction as that of the moon reinforcing it and causing the greatest rise and fall of tidal level the highest spring tides occur at equinoxes now let's take a look at these two positions now what happens if the sun and the moon are in a straight line the moon exerts a gravitational pull on the earth and the sun also exerts a gravitational pull on the earth so the gravitational pull of the sun assists or it supports the gravitational pull of the moon so the tides are going to be greater but when the moon is in this position the moon is going to exert pressure this way and the sun is going to exert pressure from here so in this in this position what happens the gravitational pull of the uh, sun it negates the gravitational pull of the moon on these two days there are going to be neap tides when this position is there and on this day there are going to be spring tides question number 32 PSW stands for what is the full form of PSW question from computers it stands for program status word that is the simple answer question number 32 program status word question number 33 which was the first hydel power project in India Palli Vasal in Kerala, Paikara in Tamil Nadu, Shiva Sundram in Karnataka, Nizam Sagar in Nizam Nagar in Andhra Pradesh. These are my questions. Answer is C. The first Heidel power project, the hydroelectric power station near Shiva, uh, near Shiva Sundram falls of the Kaveri in Karnataka was first major power station in India. It was owned by a few British companies. It was set up by General Electric of the USA and it was commissioned in 1902. The first small hydroelectric power plant was started at Darjeeling. Question number 34. During the Second World War, which one of the following countries are not one of the three Axis powers which fought against the Allied powers? The Axis powers uh, uh, and Allied powers, both of them, uh, these two terms were used during the Second World War. Axis powers was the coalition headed by Germany, Italy, uh, and it was headed by Germany, there was Italy and Japan and they opposed the Allied powers in the World War II. So question number 34, we are being asked who was not a part. So 34 answer is going to be C, China. Answer is going to be C, China. 35 the highest mountain peak the highest mountain peak in peninsular india is which is the highest mountain peak in peninsular india the options are annaimudi doda beta mahendragiri or nilgiris these are my options the highest peak of peninsular india is annaimudi because is suppose this is peninsular India as you go towards the south uh, here you have the western ghats here you have the eastern ghats as you go towards the south the height is going to increase so the highest peak of peninsular India is Annaimudi and it is located in Kerala in the western ghats 
What is Mahendragiri? Let's take a look at the other options also. Mahendragiri is the name of a hill in southern Tamil Nadu. And what is Doda Beta? It is a um, Doda Beta is the highest mountain in the Nilgiris. And where the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats meet, there you will have the Nilgiri Hills. And it is since it is bluish in color, that is why it is known as Nilgiris. Question number 35. Answer is A. Question 36. Question number 36. When a stone is thrown in the calm water of a pond, the waves produced on the surface of water in the pond are longitudinal wave, transverse waves, longitudinal and transverse waves are not produced. So, this is a question related to physics and you should have a knowledge of the waves. Question number 36. Firstly, let us understand what are uh, longitudinal and transverse waves. Now, a transverse wave is one where the displacement of the medium in which the wave is traveling is perpendicular to the pr uh, uh, propagation. A pond ripple is an example of transverse wave. The wave produced on the surface of water in the pond is an example. The waves produced on the surface of water in the pond is an example of transverse waves as particles of the medium do not move along with the wave, only the disturbance is carried forward. And another example of such waves is the vibrations of a string. So now let's go back to the question. Question number 36. When a stone is thrown in the calm water of a pond, the waves produced on the surface of the pond are question number 36. Answer is going to be A. They are longitudinal. Question number th sorry, question number 36. Answer is going to be A B transverse. 36 answer is B. 37. The Union Territory of Puducherry does not have a common boundary with. The Union Territory of Puducherry does not have a common boundary with physical India, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Karnataka or Tamil Nadu. Answer is going to be C. Karnataka. The Union Territory of Puducherry, it consists of four small unconnected districts. They are Pondicherry, Karaikal, Yanam on the Bay of Bengal and Mahi on the Arabian Sea. Pondicherry and Karikal are enclaves of Tamil Nadu and Yenam and, and Mahe are enclaves of Andhra Pradesh and Kerala respectively. Question number 37. Which of the following three R's are regarded as environment friendly? Reduce, rebuild, restrict, random, reduce, recall, re read, register, recall, reduce, reuse, recycle. Answer is D. Answer is D for question number 38. The three R's of eco-friendly living are reduce. Firstly, whatever you wish to use resources from the environment, use them less and uh, reduce the usage. Next is to reuse. Like for example, paper is reuse, paper can be reused and recycle. So these are the three eco-friendly R's. They all help to cut down on the amount of waste we throw away. They conserve natural resources, landfill space and energy. Question number 38. Question number 39. The largest white blood corpuscle is lymphocyte, monocyte, thrombocyte, erythrocyte. Question number 39. Let us see the options. Question number 39. Lymphocytes. What are lymphocytes? Now we will uh, talk about the different kind of blood cells. Lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell and they play a very important role in the immune system because they protest, protect us against bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites. Tomorrow if you are given a question in any paper as to which cells protect us against bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites, answer is lymphocytes. Monocytes, they are a type of white blood cell that fights off bacteria, viruses and fungi and the monocytes are the biggest type of white blood cell in the immune system. Originally, they were, it was formed, uh, originally formed in the bone marrow. They are released into our blood and tissues. When certain germs enter the body, they rush to the side for attack. Monocytes, biggest type of white blood cell. Then we have platelets or thrombocytes. They are a component of blood whose function al uh, along with coagulation factors is to stop bleeding by clumping and clotting. And then we have red blood cells, RBCs, also known as erythrocytes. They are the most common type of blood cell and the vertebrate organism's principal means of delivering oxygen to the body tissues. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी नाइन सो द लार्जेस्ट व्हाइट ब्लड कॉर्पसल इज क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी नाइन आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी मोनोसाइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी रिलेटेड टू हिस्ट्री विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग मुगल एम्प्रस रोड देर ओन ऑटोबायोग्राफीज शाह आलम एंड फारूक सियर बाबर एंड जहांगीर जहांगीर एंड शाह जहान अकबर एंड औरंगजेब आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी बी बाबर एंड जहांगीर बाबर द फाउंडर ऑफ द मुगल एम्पायर इन इंडिया Babur wrote his memoirs which form the main source for details of his life and he had come to India from Afghanistan and uh, from Afghanistan and he very keenly observed India and he wrote and he, this book is known as Babur Nama it is written in the Turki language or the Turkish language you can also be given a question as to Babur Nama is written in which language it is written in the Turkish language Jahangir too wrote his autobiography Jahangir's autobiography is known as Tuzuke Jahangiri Tuzuke Jahangiri and it is written in the Persian language Question number 41 How many members are nominated by the president to the Rajya Sabha? Two, ten, five, or twenty. The president nominates how many members to the Rajya Sabha? Question from Polity. Article eighty sub clause three very clearly lays down that it lays down that the president of India nominates a maximum of twelve members to the Rajya Sabha. and these members have special knowledge or practical experience in the fields of literature science art and social science etc like mary com was nominated and mary com is from the field of sports sachin was nominated he was uh, he is from the field of sports again there are many others rekha was nominated or uh, rekha is from the field of uh, cinema so question number 41 answer is going to be answer for this question is question number 41 Answer is going to be question number forty-one. Answer two mem uh, two members are not no, no. Answer for this question is twelve. And here we do not have it among the options. So, but the answer is twelve. Question number forty-two. Real nation uh, real national income donates. National income at constant prices, per capita income, national income at current prices, or net factor income. This is my question. Answer will be national income at constant prices. Forty-three. Microbial type culture collection center is situated at. What is microbial type culture collection center and where is it? The microbial type culture collection center and gene bank. Housed at Institute of Microbial Technology is at Chandigarh. It was established in the year 1986. Uh, it was established and it is funded jointly by Department of Biotechnology and Council for Scientific and Industrial Research (CSIR). Question number 43. Answer is B. Chandigarh. 44. The ore of aluminium is flows, uh, fluorspar, bauxite. Calliopyrites or hematite. What is the ore of aluminium? Answer is B. Bauxite. Bauxite is an aluminium ore. It is the world's main source of aluminium. Bauxite is primarily composed of aluminium oxide compounds. And then we also have here fluorite. Fluorite is also known as fluorospar. It is the mineral form of calcium fluoride. We have hematite here. Hematite. This is a reddish black mineral consisting of ferric oxide, and it is an important ore of iron. Question number forty-four, forty-five, forty-five. Question number forty-five. Who discovered the first antibiotic? W. Fleming, C. Waxman, Louis Pasteur, or A. Fleming. Names of very important people, and why did they become famous? Now we'll discuss about all four of them. But right now, let me tell you the answer for question number forty-five. Answer is D. A. Fleming. He discovered the first antibiotic. Now, Sir Alexander Fleming. That's his name, A. Fleming. Sir Alexander Fleming discovered the world's first antibiotic, and the world's first antibiotic is penicillin G. Please remember this. Which among the following was the first antibiotic? You could be given a question. Penicillin G. And for this, he got the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1945. Very important, and he got this prize along with Forward Florey, Ernest Boris Chain. Then we have Selman Abraham Waxman. Selman, uh, the next we have it among the options. 
Abraham Voxman. He is also a biochemist. He is a biochemist and microbiologist. He discovered streptomycin. He discovered streptomycin, a medicine, and many other antibiotics. He discovered around 20 antibiotics and introduced procedures that have led to development of many others. And this streptomycin, this is the first antibiotic active against tuberculosis or TB. And for this he was given the Nobel Prize. Then we have Louis Pasteur. He was a French chemist and microbiologist renowned for his discoveries on the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation and pasteurization. He created the first vaccine for rabies and anthrax. Please, important, very important. Who created the first vaccine for rabies and anthrax? He is best known for his invention of the technique of treating milk. If you boil it at a higher temperature, the germs are going to die. And why? To stop bacterial contamination. And this process is known as pasteurization because that is his surname, taken from his surname, pasteurization. So, these were our options. Who discovered the first antibiotic? We, discover, uh, we discussed why Louis Pasteur is famous, why others are famous, Voxman, etc. Question number 45. My answer is going to be D. A. Fleming. Question number, let us move on to question number 46 now. Which of the following does not act both as an exocrine, exocrine gland and an endocrine gland? My options are pituitary, testis, pancreas and ovary. This is a question related to biology. So, out of these, there are three which will act as both exocrine and endocrine gland and there is going to be one which does not act as both. What are endocrine glands? Endocrine glands are glands of the endocrine system. They secrete their products hormones directly into blood rather than through a duct. And the major glands of the endocrine system are pineal gland, pituitary gland, pancreas, ovaries, testis, thyroid gland, hypothalamus, adrenal gland. Exocrine glands are those that produce and excrete substances into the epithelial surface by way of a duct. Examples of exocrine glands are sweat, salivary, mammary, etc. The pancreas located in the abdomen close to the stomach is both an exocrine and endocrine gland. Both ovaries and testes are examples of organs that have endocrine and exocrine functions. The endocrine function of the gonads is production of the sex hormones, estrogen and androgen, while their exocrine function is to produce gametes. Now let's go back to the question. So here question in this question, answer for question number 46, which is not both, that is 46 answer is A, the pituitary. The pituitary is not both, it is not both exocrine and endocrine, 46. 47, kerosene oil rises up in a wick of a lantern because of diffusion of the oil through the wick, surface tension, buoyant force of air, gravitation pull of the wick. Question number 47, answer is A, surface tension. Both capillary action and surface tension are responsible, but in the options, there is no capillary action, so we will go with surface tension. 48, the environment protection bill was passed by the parliament in which year? It was passed in the year 1986. The Environment Protection Act was enacted in 1986 with the objective of providing for protection and improvement of the environment. It empowers the central government to establish authorities charged with the mandate of preventing environmental pollution and to tackle specific environmental problem. Question number 48, answer is C. 49, when a helium atom loses an electron, it becomes, it becomes a positive helium ion. This is the answer 49D. Last question to be done. Question number 50 related to current events. Who has won the 2016 Women's Single Wimbledon Championship? Simple question. Answer is Serena Williams. Serena Williams is my answer. Serena Williams has won the 2016 Women's Single Wimbledon Championship and she defeated Angelique Kerber in the final by 7-5-6-3 in London. With this win, Williams equals Steffi Graf's open era record of 22 major single titles. That was the last question to be done in this paper. I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you for watching my presentation.